Biobalance HealthCast, episode 102, Prostate Cancer and Testosterone. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skin care. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. You know, Kathy, a, a conversational joke, it's kind of like uh, whistling when you walk through the graveyard among men my age and who are my friends, is that if, if nothing else kills you, eventually prostate cancer will. If you just live long enough, mm -hmm. you'll die from prostate cancer. Just like all old wives' tales, but it's old men's tales. But it's tales. what men say to each other, and, <laughs> yeah. and it's what my friends say. And, and you know, we kind of like you know, have a drink and nudge each other in the arm and say, oh, well, if that doesn't kill you, prostate cancer will. Mm -hmm. and, and today we're going to be talking about some of the new information that's out based on old research. It's sort mm -hmm. of a... A relook. A relook re mm -hmm. at the data in more depth than was originally done. It really challenges the, the myths about the understanding or the treatment of prostate cancer in men. Mm -hmm. And it it's based on an article that was published, uh, an excerpt from a book uh, by Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler mm -hmm. uh, at Harvard University. And he has a new book out, too. And he has a new book out. So for people that are interested, you can check his name and, and find the article. But what we're going to do today is talk a little bit of, uh, in summary about the, the concepts of the article and how those concepts fly in the face of accepted medical wisdom, things that doctors have been trained, urologists have been trained to know as a as a fundamental fact. item of faith. Yeah. It's, you know, it's this a is fact. a truism. Yeah. And, and the truism there they are still saying is testosterone causes prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And that myth is what Dr. Morgan Thaler it just totally <laughs> they say fact out. we say myth we say myth yeah. they say fact right. and he has taken all the information and shown us that that's simply not true mm -hmm. that he, he's an interesting guy he's done more prostatectomies than any doctor in the United States that means he's treated more prostate cancer than any doctor in the United States so that's an amazing number anyway. Okay, a prostatectomy, say Means that Means a prostatectomy, I can't, I'll say it yeah. once. Prostatectomy is removal of the prostate for cancer. That's the only reason you would remove it. Okay, okay? so it's not a removal of a sample of tissue. It's not a no, removal of No, it's not a, a biopsy. Piece. It's actual removal of the prostate. That's okay. the treatment that has always been done when there is an aggressive prostate cancer found. And so the after effects of that, if you have your prostate removed, what's left? Well, uh, testicles are left and you can still make testosterone, uh -huh. but the prostate contributes the fluid that goes into the ejaculate. So without that, the, there's very little ejaculate left. So okay. your sex life is essentially well, the sex life, dramatically changed. Your ejaculate's different, but depending on how well your pros prostate surgery is done or how bad your cancer was, mm -hmm. you can lose all ability to have an erection. No, It doesn't get better with Viagra. It doesn't get better with anything. It's actual damage to damage the nerves. Damage to the nerves because they all go in a very and narrow tube. And nerves are so tiny, and they have to find the nerves while mm -hmm. they're in there. But still, just touching a nerve can make it can make it non-functional. Mm -hmm. So they have to dissect the prostate away from the nerves that go to the penis, mm -hmm. okay? So they have to dissect that out, get the prostate out, make sure there's no cancer left. Right. And then, then they have to wait to see if you're going to be functional again. Okay. Now we've had some great, in terms of prostate cancer, in terms mm -hmm. of surgery for prostate cancer, we've had some great um, leaps in terms of treatment and, and people who get their prostates out with, um, with the Da Vinci, which is a laparoscopic, uh, kind of procedure. In other words, you have tiny little incisions all over your abdomen. Mm -hmm. You're asleep, and then they put in instruments through these incisions, but then the instruments are run by a computer. So it can be very finely tuned. In mm -hmm. other words, you don't have somebody's mitts, hands, no matter how small they are. Right. They're not as 
particular, they're not as perfect as two tiny little graspers who mm -hmm. go in there and dissect. So you have you're lying on a table, you have all of these instruments in your abdomen that are placed by surgeons, then the surgeon goes back behind the computer screen and he or she dissects everything out and gets rid of the prostate, takes out pieces of it, and then makes sure nothing is bleeding and they can see the nerves very well because it's under a magnification. So it's called so Da Vinci because it's, it's a masterpiece of the surgical yes, art? Yes, it is. Yeah. I don't know why it's called Da Vinci. I just know it is called Da Vinci. We use it for many other procedures. Mm -hmm. We use it for, in the GYN world, we use it for radical hysterectomies, and we use it for lots of uh, cancer surgeries in OB, mm -hmm. and general surgery uses it for colectomies and things like that. So, so it is a very, very new, very precise instrument. Right. right. So in this case, if someone had prostate cancer that had actually progressed, mm -hmm. then that would be one of the ways to treat it. There are other ways. However, what we're talking about today is how not to get it and, how, and what treatment to avoid once you do have it and based on what Dr. Morgan Thaler, the most prolific uh, prostate cancer doctor, mm -hmm. has told us. Yes. Well, and some of it has to do with genetic markers. I mean, there's, there's uh, stuff in the news just in the last week about um, identifying genetic markers that predict, that allow them to make uh, reasonable assumptions about which prostate cancer tumors are going to be aggressive mm -hmm. and which may need to be uh, having a more aggressive intervention. Mm -hmm. So that's new, and they're working to, to develop that and, and get it out in the community so that doctors know about it. Uh, but in this case, one of the myths uh, that we want to talk about was that if you replace testosterone or enhance testosterone with some kind of additional delivery mechanism, mm -hmm. a, a shot, a pellet, whatever it is, that you, if you give men who have low testosterone counts testosterone, and if they have prostate cancer tumors already, mm -hmm. that that additional testosterone accelerates the growth of the tumor. Right. And, and that's the myth. That's the myth. And why is it a myth? It's a myth because testosterone only stimulates the cells in the very beginning. It's like filling up a bucket. When, when somebody has prostate cancer cells, they generally have very low testosterone levels. So, because part of the reason you have a prostate cancer cell is because you've experienced low testosterone. Okay? Okay. It allows the cells to become abnormal. So do we know, is it, is it causative or is it correlative? They don't know if it's they don't causative, know they yet. just know that they, they go know, together. So there, there's so a correlation. a low testosterone in a man is much more dangerous than a high testosterone. And logically that makes sense. We Men don't get prostate cancer when they're 19. They get prostate cancer as they get old, when their testosterone drops. Right. Okay, so okay. the way this works is with a low testosterone, if you give someone with a low testosterone who already has prostate cancer cells in the prostate, it will stimulate them to a point. It will make the it will stimulate them until the prostate is saturated with testosterone. So when you fill that the body's bucket of testosterone, all there's stimulation of the prostate. You might get a flare. You may see uh, an enlargement of the prostate. You may see advancement of the cells to a point. But then when the prostate is sufficiently fed with testosterone, then they don't progress anymore. So as long as you keep your testosterone high, then that stops the growth of the cancer cells. Okay, so, so it's like being parched in the desert mm -hmm. and being dry. Yeah. All of your cells, all your tissues are dry and you start to consume water and they absorb moisture. Right. Uh, and then they reach a and point And they start where, dividing and, you know, you right. start, you start mm -hmm. recovering. But they reach an, a point where their capacity to absorb is saturated. Mm -hmm. And at that point, giving additional testosterone doesn't feed the tumor. Right. And the tumor just stops. It doesn't progress. Okay. So prostate cancers are, are a lot like other types of, um, like, Breast cancer. Breast cancer takes 7 to 11 years to go from one cell to something that we can see and diagnose mm -hmm. or feel. So you've so had it for 6 or 7 years before, before anybody can, can tell that you can even find it. 
Right, or okay. even 10. Some of, the, some of the experts say that it's 10 years from one cell to discoverable. So prostate cancer is a really slow, long-term cancer where one cell is just, just dividing, 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 but it starts with a low testosterone atmosphere. Okay, so the body has low testosterone, so the cells become abnormal. Now, one of the tests that the study that Morgan Thaler talks about, they took prostate cells from young men, and they took prostate cells from older men, and they kept, kept them in a low testosterone environment. And both older men's cells and younger men's cells progressed to abnormal in a low testosterone environment. Mm -hmm. Then they took cells from young men and older men, same, same patients, took, put them in a different Petri dish, and they surrounded them with testosterone. The cells that had changed and looked a little funny stopped dividing and died. And the testosterone bathing these cells was what was stopping them from becoming an advanced cancer. Mm -hmm. They, they concluded that everybody, just like in breast cells, every male has prostate cancer cells that start to develop, but your body gobbles them up and kills them, okay? Okay. But if you, if you can, if your cancer cells can elude the immune system, and testosterone stimulates your immune system, if you can elude the immune system, then if you are in a high testosterone environment, they don't progress. They right. just so, stay so there. So genetically, we all males are predisposed because they have because you have a prostate. potential <laughs> cancer cells. Yes, just like breast cancer and cells. And if there's a low testosterone environment, then the immune system doesn't protect, protect against the growth of the cancer cells the way that it would. Right. And so if you, if you have low testosterone, either because surgically you've been castrated or there's some other issue. Or you're getting old. Or, or, yeah, that too. <laughs> that too. Uh, and you haven't been replaced. And you replace the testosterone, mm -hmm. you replace the shield. You replace the mm -hmm. protection that, that uh, inhibits or reduces the ability of those cancer cells to grow. That's right. So That's right. the joke is a true joke. If, if you don't get testosterone, if you don't get treatment for mm -hmm. it, and something else doesn't kill you first, eventually prostate cancer right. will. Because it's a, it's a disease of aging. Of course, I plan on, I, it won't get me until I'm 187. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> or die of take something. Take all that. Yep, die of something yeah, else. Exactly. Die of something else. Yeah. But, but this, even though there's a genetic component, testosterone, keeping testosterone at a decent level, mm -hmm. at a normal level, still is protective. Well, it's what, just that little flare that everybody freaks over because sometimes when you get testosterone, it makes the prostate enlarge and everybody gets worried. And so then they don't really think through, okay, we're filling this prostate up with testosterone, saturating it, then everything's going to calm back down again. Okay, so what's fascinating about reading this article, especially for a non-medical guy, is, is it's like a detective story. And what Dr. Morgan Thaler writes is that he was taught in school and he goes to medical conferences and the standard wisdom of the age, the, the ex-cathedra from the bishop's chair pronouncement of all the knowledgeable people is, X. And he says, well, wait a minute, my research shows Y. And one of the big talking heads at one of these conferences stands up and says, I can't believe we're listening to this crap. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. We know the truth. You know, we're wasting our time. <laughs> and, and so that brings us to a, an interesting twist on that. He's a voice in the wilderness saying, yes. wait a minute, guys, we're all heading in the wrong direction. And here's my data to show it. Mm -hmm. And initially, the entrenched, established medical system was saying, we refuse to listen to you because you're a flake, you're a weirdo, you're out there, this is BS. Now more people are starting to, and this is a guy from Harvard who's done more of these surgeries yeah, than anybody. He's so an expert. He's, he's the not expert. some flake. No, yeah. he's the uh, expert. So, so what is happening is that he's pushing against the entrenched knowledge, the, the true verity of the medical system mm -hmm. with a new idea. And what's fascinating about it when you read the article is he's using old research that's been out there for a long time mm -hmm. that other people did. He's just reevaluating the data uh, with, with an open eye, with a, with a more detailed eye. And he said, well, wait, wait, wait you, you missed second base. Yeah. You, know, you gotta go back and touch second base. It's not a mm -hmm. home run. And, and, 
finally, did, people are starting to listen. Things in medicine, oftentimes, medicine, medicine is impatient. And so, so things, if they sound logical, yeah. like men have testosterone, therefore men have prostate cancer, mm -hmm. therefore testosterone must cause prostate cancer, mm -hmm. you know, they, that's kind of a logical thought. But, but they don't go to the next step. Men, as their testosterone level drops, their, tes their, level, their number of prostate cancers go up. They never really got to that step. They just use that first, oh, it's logical. Well, and it's just like it's logical that estrogen causes breast cancer. Well, that's not true. There, there's a fallacy in the logical analysis. It's uh, an under, undistributed major term is what, okay. the, the, if you study in, logic. In a, that, yeah, in logic. Uh, okay. Yeah, because while it sounds logical, it's not logical because they're correlating causation and correlation. If two mm -hmm. things happen in the same space or time, they must be one causes the linked other. Linked to the other. Th they are linked mm -hmm. in that they're in the same space and time, not that they're linked because one causes the other. Right. But we rush to that conclusion, and historically, doctors have rushed to that because they're in a hurry. Mm -hmm. They got people that are dying. They've got people that need treatment, and they have to make a, a critical decision about a surgery that may keep them alive because it stops the cancer, but radically change their quality of life. Mm -hmm. And they have to make the decision right now. Because for me, I need it done or I'm gonna die or I'm mm -hmm. gonna never have an erection again. And I want it done now. But globally, doctors have to step back and look at the accumulated data. What mm -hmm. is happening with all these different patients who do or don't get testosterone replacements, uh, who do or don't get the prostatectomy, mm -hmm. who do or don't get treatment and assess the volume of data. I love these guys that are the voice in the wilderness. Yeah. I love it because that's where you find Einstein. That's where you find all of the new, the new scientists, the new ideas, mm -hmm. and the new breakthroughs that no one else is thinking about. Everybody else is just going along, going, okay, okay, even if it doesn't make sense. Yes. So I love the guys that come out like Morgan Thaler and stand up, and he has guts, and he has courage to say, you guys are all wrong. You're and, all wrong. And persistence. You've you, you got to keep knocking at yeah, the door. Yeah, and you he writes saying, a book. But and wait. <laughs> but do you know what kind of, just to even get that book through, yeah. to get somebody to publish that book, yeah. had to be just going through hell because his idea opposes the others. Just like getting our book published, mm -hmm. opposed all the other ideas that women don't have testosterone. Right. No, it doesn't matter that I can show that we do. Right. And testosterone makes us better. It's the same idea. So I love these guys. Well, that and, and that women don't need, and, need to enjoy sex. And well, that, that once yeah. they've they've gone beyond their breeding years, then all that stuff is just you a just foolish give concern. Up. Give that up. <laughs> Let yourself get heavy. Let yourself get It was get only old. about 10 years ago that the American College of OBGYN said that, the president said in our journal, that all sex drive for a woman starts with her husband. Okay, he didn't address You have the keys lesbians. to the kingdom. He didn't, and you yeah. didn't know it. <laughs> and, you know, if you aren't, you know, you are the one that produces a sex drive in your spouse. She doesn't have one independent from you. Now, how wrong is that? And how old-fashioned, and that's how, just 10 years ago, the college that I belong to what was, was thinking. Was the president of this college male? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. they've always, there's been very Did few Did he ever talk to females. a female? I mean, he was married, but that doesn't mean he talked to her. Okay. So, but I, yeah, but he's an OBGYN. Of, well, of course he's talking. Well, but he's talking to the other at, end. Yeah, I know. But. Okay, he's not conversational. <laughs> okay, it was only, I mean, I was the first person in, in my, I was one of the very first OBGYNs in St. Louis. Yeah. There were like three of us out of hundreds. Right. At the time that I graduated. Female. Female. Yes. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of males, and then there were three well, of us. Well, you shouldn't bother your and pretty little head home about that stuff. Having you know, babies, is so. the spaghetti ready? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. We, okay. we digress. So this the, is so this is the same. I mean, I kind of view this as kind of part of the whole problem. People who believe and have their blinders on, and they believe, 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 no matter what anybody right. tells them. Don't confuse me with the facts. That's My right. mind is made Don't up. Don't give me more. I send articles to other doctors, and I know it just goes in the trash. Yeah. Oh, it's so, that woman again. It's that woman again. She's trying to show me how, you know, something I know I'm never going to believe. So yeah. you have to open your mind up a little bit. But patients who have this problem right now can't wait 20 years for them to open their eyes up. They so see, need to take care of it e now. Even though Dr. Morgan Thaler's book and article is interesting in its own right, 
Kathy comes rushing in, waving the daggum thing, <laughs> saying, here's another one. Here's another here's one. Another He's guy just with like a me. great idea. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not the expert that he is in terms of what medicine views as an expert. Yeah. But thank God he's doing it. Well, thank God he's doing it. And, and thank God that it, it feeds into our crusade about being an informed consumer. There, there are so many avenues now for you to make yourself aware of things that are going on, for you to acquire information. This podcast is one. Uh, the journals that are written out there are, are another. There are places that you can go to then arm yourself and go in and talk to your physician and say, but wait, I want to talk about this before you do that. And you have that right and you have that responsibility to be an informed consumer. And one of the ways that you can be one is come back next week and watch the next podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.